In this video, I'm going to show you the dangers of excess sugar in your body and why you should be limiting it. Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick, where my purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly why you should limit excess sugar in your body because of the potential dangers and diseases it can cause. Guys, if you like what we're talking about in this video, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you click that little bell notification so you get notified anytime I do a video. Well, guys, let's jump right into why you should be avoiding sugar almost at all costs. So first of all, let's talk about what sugar does when it gets inside your body. So sugar can come in in many different forms, but primarily it's gonna be glucose, fructose, and sucrose. So let me explain to you what that is a little bit. So obviously, glucose is the main sugar that we all refer to when we're talking about glycemic index. Fructose is, of course, fruit sugar. Now, sucrose, many of you don't realize, but sucrose is actually a combination of glucose and fructose. So if you take one molecule of glucose, one molecule of fructose, put it together, you get sucrose. And sucrose is basically table sugar. Now, it's important to understand there's a difference with how each one of these affects your glycemic load in your body. So primarily when glucose comes in, because glucose is readily available and readily usable, it goes right into your bloodstream and is then taken to the cells. Fructose first has to go through your liver. So it gets processed through the liver, then it can go into your bloodstream and to your cells. Now, sucrose is actually a molecule of fructose and a molecule of glucose put together. So when you put those together, obviously part of it, the fructose portion, has to go through the liver first before it's processed, sent to the blood and into the cells. So a question I always get is why is it that you get a higher spike in blood sugar when you take in glucose, in other words, bread, than you would eating regular sugar off the spoon. And the reason is because precisely what it's made of. Because it's made of a molecule of glucose and a molecule of fructose, half of it has to first be processed through the liver before it can go into the bloodstream and to the cells, whereas the glucose directly goes in. So in answer to your question, when bread is consumed, it goes directly in the form of glucose, so it goes right into your blood sugar and it spikes your blood. In fact, the glycemic index of a piece of bread is about 73 compared to a Snickers bar, which is sugar, which is about 41. So you actually get a greater spike with glucose than you actually do table sugar. So guys, when it goes into your mouth, now it starts to get digested by salivary amylase. So there is enzymes inside your mouth that start the digestive process. Unlike proteins, which wait till you really get into your stomach and small intestine, sugar is digested directly in your mouth, which is one of the reasons why it starts to become so addictive because you get that sweet taste right away. It then goes into the stomach where it's mixed with gastric juices, and then it's taken to the small intestine, and that's really where it's absorbed into your cells. So insulin now kicks in, and insulin's what's gonna now shuttle it into the cell to be burned for fuel. And as long as your body's working properly and you have adequate amounts of insulin and low insulin resistance, your body will take the glucose into your cell where it's then processed and used for fuel. Now, excess glucose has to go somewhere else. So because you have excess, your body can't use it all inside the cell for fuel, it's gotta get stored. So the first place it's gonna get stored is the liver. So the liver is a storage house amongst many, many other jobs for the liver. One of it is to store glucose in a form of glycogen and also the muscle. So your muscle does also store some uh, glucose in a form of glycogen too. This is where you have your reserves mainly. And a lot of times people who go on things like the ketogenic diet or the metabolic healing diet, you will first lower your carbs so that you burn up all these reserves and then your body will start to turn fat to fat for fuel. Now, if it doesn't get just reserved here, if there's too much, stored sugar gets converted to triglycerides and it is then stored as fat. So that's the last resort. We like to just have it here, but if you're taking in too much, it's then going to get stored as fat. Now, excess also starts to cause a lot of metabolic problems. We start to look at the brain. So let's start with that first. 
Well, it can cause a lot of moodiness. You see those crashes where your blood sugar goes up and down and up and down and up and down. You wake up, you're looking for some coffee with some sweetener, maybe a muffin, maybe a bagel. You get that sugar rush, then it comes down and around 11 o'clock, you're looking for more. Now you're looking for another sugar rush, another muffin, another bagel, piece of you know, candy, maybe a snicker bar down at the work concession stand. You're starting to look for that because your body's going up and down. You're getting those mood changes. Not only that, it can cause dopamine sensitivity issues. So all of a sudden, when you're starting to get this up and down rush, these dopamine hits in your brain, eventually your brain becomes desensitized to it. It's almost like when you're, you're having so much sugar all the time, eventually it doesn't taste that sweet to you. So you start to get this dopamine sensitivity issue where it really starts to affect your mood. You can start to get depression. Also, excess sugar inside the brain can lead to dementia where you start to have issues processing sugar. So a lot of our patients who we see come in for things like Alzheimer's, you know, there's not a lot that you can do, but one of the main things we do is get them on the metabolic healing diet because the body can process fats and it can be used in the brain for fuel, for energy, but it cannot process sugars that well. So dementia patients typically have, and Alzheimer's patients, typically have issues processing sugars. So that's why we get them on the metabolic healing diet. And of course, it could also increase your risk of stroke because it starts to affect the little blood vessels, the little capillaries, this excess sugar, and it starts to cause them to become brittle and they start to leak and you start to get strokes and TIAs, transient ischemic attacks. Now, also can cause blindness because once again, and we see this with a lot of patients that are diabetic, we start to see issues with, once again, the capillaries, those tiny little blood vessels that get damaged when you have excess sugar in your system. So it can also lead to blindness and visual impairment. Skin aging, because what happens is when you have this excess glucose in your body, it can bind with proteins or lipids in your blood and produce something called AGEs, advanced glycation end products. And these actually can cause the wrinkling and premature aging that you see in skin. It also leads to type 2 diabetes. We all know this, that excess blood sugar that isn't getting utilized, that isn't getting brought into the cells to be burned for fuel, is raising your blood sugar levels too high, typically above 100. So when you start to get to these levels of 100, 200, 300, we have got clients that have, you know, we've worked with that have been in a range of 600 or more, and we're able to bring it down because we start to change their diet, modify what they're eating, change everything they're bringing into their body because they're not getting excess sugar anymore. Also to insulin resistance. That's probably one of the biggest factors that we see when working with our clients for diabetes is the fact that they're not even sensitive to insulin anymore. They have insulin resistance, which means their body could be producing plenty of insulin. In fact, they have lots of insulin coming in uh, basically from the, the different drugs that they are, are on when they first come in as patients or clients. But the problem is they're insulin resistant. They've got insulin in their system. It's floating around in their bloodstream, but it's not getting heard by the cells. The cells aren't even aware of it. So they're not letting the insulin bring the sugar into the cells to be burned for fuel. Also too, it can feed cancer. Cancer cells have anywhere from 10 to 70 times more receptors for sugar than anything else. So they love sugar. In fact, many times when people are being evaluated to see if they have cancer, they will do a PET scan because they want to see where the cancer is and how much of it is there. So what they'll have them do is they'll inject a solution with a, a radioactive tracker and sugar. And the cancer cells are absorbing all that sugar up and it will light up where the cancer cells are because that's where the radioactive element is emitting signals. So one of the best things we do with clients when we're trying to help them with cancer is we get them on the metabolic healing diet so that way they're using fat for fuel rather than using sugar for fuel because you want to starve cancer cells you starve them by eliminating the sugar and give them fat which they cannot process so you ultimately end up starving them not only that heart disease as i said before we're talking about all the little small blood vessels that are around the heart well they start to become inflamed and even the bigger blood vessels become inflamed when there's too much blood sugar so this inflammation leads to heart disease joint inflammation like we talked about ages advanced glycation end products those ages and the inflammation get inside the joints and it ends up creating joint problems just like we talked about with skin problems it disrupts the gut you get where your gut microbiome is the wrong type. Instead of maybe being bacteroidetes, 
it's Firmicutes, which is basically a high carb type of bacteria. So when you want a bacteria ratio of say 85 to 15 percent of good to bad, this totally skews it in the wrong direction. So it's too much sugar, you start to create a gut microbiome that's highly, highly addicted to sugar. And that's why you crave it so much because you want to feed those bugs. So those bugs are making you get the cravings. That's why you're feeling it so much, especially when you want to go to bed at night. Erectile and sexual dysfunction. Once again, when you're dealing with those little tiny capillaries and microtubules around the male reproductive organs, you start to create problems with of course, erectile dysfunction. Guys, you want to solve this problem, get off of the sugars and get onto a healthier diet. Fatty liver. Fatty liver many times caused by too much fructose in your diet. You start to create all this, you know, excess sugar and excess fat in your liver. Kidney failure. Once again, we're coming back to those small little microtubules, those small little capillary beds. You start to damage them in the kidneys, and next thing you know, you have kidney failure and you are on dialysis. And many of our clients see this because they see their family members or they come to us that have been on dialysis because they're struggling with type 2 diabetes. And they want the help because they are afraid that they're going to be on dialysis for the rest of their lives. And many people are. You're on dialysis for maybe five, six hours a day, sometimes five to seven days a week. It's a full-time job that can be eliminated by knowing what to do, knowing what your strategies are on how to change your diet completely, how to reduce your insulin resistance. And guys, this is stuff that we can help you with. If you want to figure it out on your own, that's okay too. But if you'd like our help, I'm going to put a link down below for a webinar that you can watch to get more information and see if this is something you'd like us to help you with. All you have to do, guys, is raise your hand. Just ask. If you want our help, we're here to help you. We'll show you a strategy. We'll let you know what we can do to help you out to reverse your diabetes or your other metabolic disorders so that way you can get your health back. But it takes one thing. It, one thing, it just takes raising your hand, and you'll simply fill out a form where we get an application, a short application, to see what it is that we can do to help you out with. Then we'll schedule a call so that you can get on the phone with me personally and see if there's anything we can help you out with. But like I said, all it takes is literally raising your hand, guys, and we'll see what we can do to help you out with. But anyway, I hope you liked the video. Once again, check the link down below if you're looking for more information or if you'd like our help. We can schedule a call. And like I said, hey, if you don't want our help, that's okay too. But at least we'll give you some good information so you can come away from that call with at least a strategy. All right? Well, guys, I love and appreciate you. Thanks for watching. This is Dr. Nick. God bless, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.